And also, two weeks ago, I realized the arrival direction of 3A Atlas was within nine degrees of the wow signal that was detected in 1977, right. Right. which was an enigmatic, powerful radio signal that definitely came from outside of this Earth. We don't know from where. It was coming from a source that was approaching the sun. And the chance of it aligning with the arrival direction of 3A Atlas is 0.6%. And uh, I just said, well, that's interesting because 3A Atlas was uh, at a distance of three light days uh, from the Earth at that time, you know. And uh, uh, you just need about uh, uh, the output of a nuclear reactor on Earth, a gigawatt or so, to produce such a radio signal. By the way, Voyager, right, as of now, is one light day away from Earth. Just think about uh. it. One light day, our, you know, the farthest spacecraft we ever launched is one light day away, and the size of the Milky Way galaxy, we are talking about tens of thousands of light years. So one day out of tens of thousands of years, that's the difference between the distance that we managed to bridge so far compared to another civilization that may have sent something to our backyard. Right. Now, have we ever observed things in the past that have changed their tail like this? So there gone are from fake, a jet to a tail. The, this is called an anti-tail when it's pointing towards the sun. Mm -hmm. There were optical illusions in a situation where, you know, the there is a tail which is pushed away from the sun by radiation and solar wind, mm -hmm. but you are observing it as the Earth goes through the orbital plane of of of, of this uh, object of this comet, and you are seeing it from a perspective that it looks as if the tail is pointed at the sun, but in fact it's it's just a perspective thing. It's an optical illusion, and there were mm -hmm. cases like that. That that was seen, but as far as I know. None seen in a situation where it's clear. And in 3I Atlas, it was very far from the sun and earth, and we saw it towards the sun. There cannot be an optical illusion under these circumstances because it was approaching both the earth and the sun roughly at the same direction. So I'm not aware of another. But most importantly, you should look at the response of the comet expert community to that anomaly. They say, well, comets are strange. We don't know. Maybe it's, um, these are dust particles that are very big, so they don't get pushed back much. But then how do you scatter sunlight? Usually you need particles that have a size of the order of the wavelength of the light that is being scattered. That's the most efficient process. And when you have dust particles, the ones that have you know, sub-micrometer uh, dimensions are dominating the scattering of sunlight. So why, in this case, you will have only big ones that are not getting pushed back? It could be fragments of ice that are scattering the sunlight that have nothing to do with dust, but those fragments of ice get, get evaporated, and so they don't have enough time to turn back, you know? I wrote two papers on that trying to explain it. But my point is, many scientists are not curious you, you would find it surprising. Why are they not curious? Why are they not willing to consider alternative explanations to what is commonly thought? And it's because they're afraid of taking any risk. You know, and uh, I came from a background where I worked in cosmology, trying to figure out puzzles. Like most of the matter in the universe is of a substance that we don't know what it is. You know, we, we call it dark matter. It's just to, to reflect our ignorance. You know, Nobel Prizes were awarded for people who quantified how much dark matter there is, how much dark energy there is. These are constituents whose nature is unknown. And just think about it, giving a Nobel Prize to people who just said how ignorant we are. We don't know what these things are. Ordinary matter might makes just 5% of all the matter in the universe. And in this culture of cosmology, when, you know, I worked in for three decades, um, it was, you know, completely common to propose ideas to explain anomalies. I mean, the dark matter is an anomaly. You don't right. know what it is. And people were rewarded for coming up with ideas, imaginative ideas that can be tested experimentally. That's the way you make progress. You don't know something. You are putting on the table possibilities, and then you motivate observers or experimentalists to figure out which one is the correct one. And that was the culture. And 
I think of it as the culture of chess players. Okay. Okay. Trying to figure out things. When I get to work on comets, you know, asteroids, these objects, and consider imaginative possibilities to explain their anomalies the way I did in the context of cosmology, I encounter, you know, a, a, a culture of mud wrestlers. Mud It, wrestlers. It's different from chess players. Right. Um, and, you know, I don't want to mud wrestle. I don't want to get dirty. I don't respond to the, I learned my lesson with Oumuamua. I don't respond to those people because once we collect, I just want as much evidence as possible so that they would not be able to shove the anomalies under the carpet of traditional thinking. That's my motivation. Right. So I'm uh, inspiring a debate right now, and there is a huge interest in that debate so that we will collect as much data as possible so that by the end of the day, we'll figure out what our dating partner is. If it happens to be a rock, You know, on the other side of the table, you go on a date and you see a rock, so be it. If it's something else, that has huge implications. Right. And therefore, we should consider that possibility seriously and just collect as much data as possible. What is it about your field in particular that you think motivates mudslinging? Like, why, why are they averse to risk and why do they not just, why are they not just averse to risk, but why are they attacking you? for proposing what seems to me to be a reasonable alternative considering the possibilities given all the planets and stars that we know are out there. Well, I got a hint uh, for the answer to your question. When I wrote the first paper on Oumuamua, right. I suggested it might be technological. Right. And the paper got accepted for publication within three days, record. The reviewer said, this is a great idea because it's consistent with all the data we have. It's, it's most likely a flat object. And therefore, it could be pushed by reflecting sunlight, which was my proposal. Then the media came to my door. And people started asking me a lot of questions. I got, you know, I, I got well known. At that point, the attacks The personal attacks started. So right. it's, so it's uh, jealousy. jealousy. Yeah, it's jealousy. Je 